I remember when I was in my late teens and early 20s, I would draft up these build lists for my project car and my future project cars that I didn't own yet, and I couldn't wait until I got older and made more money to buy all those parts and build all those cars. Well, that time has come, but of course now I also have different priorities and responsibilities, so when it comes to some mods for my projects, I'll spend the dough. But for other mods that aren't as important, I'm still very budget minded. There is no way I'm spending more than $500 for sound deadening an old project car, and that's what led me to Amazon Basics brand, which when you see the results, I think you'll be as surprised as I am. We are back in the garage working on the Land Cruiser once again and in the last episode we kind of got started on some interior mods and we installed the new touchscreen head unit and the speakers and it's great to have audio but what it did was it exaggerated the the cabin noise and the rattling and the vibration so today we're going to be installing sound deadening mat and closed cell foam to hopefully lower down those vibrations and make everything sound a little bit more pleasant within the cab because right now it's 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 a rattle trap in there now i don't really know how much of a difference it, it makes in terms of like a measurement of decibels, but I can tell you right now, when I did it on the pickup and the Forerunner, this sound from the door, that super tinny sound was completely gone. And it makes the doors close with a lot more solid of like a, a thunk, and it's just, it reduces a lot of those, those vibrations and just random noises that you hear. So we're gonna hop in, start cleaning everything up, clean the carpet to get rid of what, 31 years of just stank. That's gross. And uh, start laying down all the sound deadening mat. Let's get to it. So real quick, let's address the elephant in the room. I'm sure I'll be asked about it. Why did I choose Amazon Basics? And I'll tell you exactly why. There's a company called Resonix and they did an, they had a whole independent test study thing, testing their sound deadener against others. Of course they won. It's very expensive stuff that they have, but look at the Amazon Basics right there. It's doing just as good as basically everything else, if not better. So you see the kill mat right there, 7.25 decibel reduction. You have the Silas, Second Skin, Noiko, Smart Mat. They're all doing worse than the Amazon Basics. So that's why I chose this brand. Um, I don't know what this is a clone of, but whatever it is, apparently they're doing a good job. So. That's why we're using it. First thing we have to do before we can lay down the sound deadening mat is clean up these surfaces. This carpet that is stuck to the floor comes up pretty easy with just your fingers. You can kind of rub it to, to just kind of remove it. But for tougher spots, I use a wire brush and that works really well too. You'll also notice the Land Cruiser already has quite a bit of factory deadener. Most cars have some deadener or a lot, uh, depends on the car, but that doesn't mean that we can't benefit from this mod. It is time for some testing. We have most of the interior removed. I mean, the front is still here, but the whole back of the truck is all torn out and that's where most of the sound's gonna come from, I think, and probably the doors. So right now we have one of the door panels off already and the entire back of the interior torn out. So if there's gonna be road noise, it's gonna be right now. And I got this little uh, decibel meter on my phone. I have no idea how accurate this is, but just sitting here right now, we're at I mean, me talking apparently can get up to 79 decibels, which seems pretty freaking loud. So we're gonna just go drive maybe 35, 40 miles an hour uh, and just see what that decibel level is and then compare it once we have all the sound deadening installed. All right, I'm just gonna hold the phone back here somewhere um, so it can get the proper audio level and uh, we'll just check what it is after. Looks like we're at about 71. 
going 40 miles an hour. 73 is the highest that I've seen right now. Just finished up the sound deadening in the rear cargo area, and I don't know if you can tell on camera, but this is actually a lot more work than it seems, and it's pretty time consuming because you have to cut out your sheets to fit around all the tow hooks and the little seat latches and whatnot. Um, not to mention that you also have to roll this into every rib of the cargo area and kind of shape it to fit. So, a little bit more time consuming than you would expect for something that's just a pill and stick solution, but I think it came out pretty good. Now, we did put this directly on top of the factory sound deadening because honestly, it's pretty nice and there's no reason to remove that we're just adding a second layer on top of it but if you wanted to you could just put dry ice on here wait a couple seconds hit it with the hammer and this will just all flake right off another thing I noticed when I was doing this job was that I had a lot of not a lot of but a little bit of water in here that I had to clean up and that must be coming from this window or some area here where it goes down the door jam and flows into this area. So once we get the front pulled out, we'll see if there's any more and we'll have to fix that to make sure we don't get any rust in these rocker panels. So now we're gonna focus on these quarter panels because these do make a lot of noise as you can hear. There's no factory sound deadening in there, so once we add the sound deadening mat into this area, it's probably going to be a lot bigger of a payoff than the cargo area since it already has the existing sound deadening. And then we're going to remove the rest of the interior, the door panels and everything else, and just keep moving forward until everything is uh, sound deadened. interior is completely removed out of the Land Cruiser and I have to say at this point if I were to do this again and what I would recommend to you if you're going to do this project is just do your doors and your quarter panels and save yourself the time. You're not going to get that much benefit from just doing the floors in this Land Cruiser considering that everything as I'm about to show you is already sound deadened from the factory and I guess it makes sense because the Land Cruiser and the LX, you know, back in the 90s were pretty like luxury vehicles um, for what they were. So they're going to be a little bit better sound deadened than something that's more of an economy vehicle. 
And yeah, I would probably just stick to the doors and the quarter panel. So as you can see, everything is already very well sound deadened in here. This black tar material is achieving just that. So we're going to lay down the sound deadening anyway since I bought it. But I, I really don't think, as I said, that we're going to see much difference here. Where we're going to see it a lot is the doors and the quarter panels, as I already said. So if you listen to this door, that thing is completely hollow inside. As we know, it's just a, it's just a door skin. There's no sound deadening in there. So we'll definitely get a lot of benefit from that. But as for all of this, yeah, maybe just save your time because this is a lot of work. So what I'm gonna do now since the day is kind of ending and I need this carpet to dry is I'm gonna start cleaning the carpet so by the time tomorrow rolls around, this is not sopping wet. If your project car has that old car smell, you know what I'm talking about, you need to clean the carpet. It's probably safe to assume that that carpet hasn't been cleaned in the last 30 plus years and it's absolutely vile what your shop vac will pull out of there. It's disgusting, trust me, clean it. It is now day three of the sound deadening project. As you can tell, and as I've said, this is a lot of work, a lot more than it seems. You can see we have the entire interior ripped out of here, but I have been making a lot of progress today off camera. So I got this entire rear passenger area done, that door and the driver floor pan since I've been out here today working on this. So all we really have left to do is the passenger floor pan and the rest of the doors. Now I did have to tear off the plastic weather barrier on that door, which is fine because I have to replace the window motor in both these back doors anyway, but I'm probably going to have to destroy that thing on the other doors too. And Toyota sells that replacement plastic or I could just use something else. So it's not really that big of a deal. So I've been using this wire brush to just kind of scrape up this existing carpet backing that's glued to the floor. And once I get all that off, we can lay down the rest of the sound deadening on the passenger side and then our second layer, which is that closed cell foam and then finish up the doors as well. So I'm probably just going to put you guys up on the tripod and the time lapse and uh, get to work and I'll, I'll see you guys once we get to the doors. Two areas I noticed a lot of sound coming from was the center console area right here where the shifter and the e-brake are and behind the dash where the firewall is. So if I ever can pull the dash off and can sound deaden that firewall, we're gonna notice a lot of difference, but also doing the center console area, we should notice some big gains here as well. We got all the sound deadening installed and now we can focus on the second layer, which is this closed cell foam. So this foam is supposed to absorb sound and also provide some sort of insulation factor. Now this first layer, I, I don't think this actually blocks any noise. I think the point of this is to reduce like resonant sound. So when a door sounds like this, it absorbs that noise essentially and blocks like vibration and that kind of sound. Now this foam is going to absorb sound waves, I believe. And now I'm, I'm a novice with this. I'm not some expert sound editor, but I don't think this actually blocks sound. I think it absorbs sound. If you actually want to block sound, I think you need to lay down some sort of rubber mat or mash loaded vinyl or something like that. But we're not going to go that far. We're just going to put on the second layer and call it good. So did the driver side. Um, now we're just going to do the passenger side. I'm going to put some of this behind each speaker and the doors too, since, you know, I might as well. And we're just going to push this box as far as it'll go. Only have one box of it. If we can get the whole truck, we will. Um, if not, then whatever. So let's get to it.
sound deadening is done, but before we can go on a test drive, I wanna fix this door card. So a lot of these little areas, these holes that hold the grommets for the door have blown out, and you can see right there, it won't hold that clip anymore. So I talked about this in the speaker video, how to fix this, and I just wanna show you guys one more time. What you're gonna do is take some really thin super glue, this right here is Starbond, and all you have to do just pour it around that hole. So you see I'm holding it together with this brush just to give it some support behind the broken area. I'm just gonna pour this all over that area. And what'll happen is it'll dry up and it'll basically solidify this masonite and make it as good as new. So we'll come back to this in like, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes and this will be completely restored. We won't have to worry about it anymore. But we're just gonna go ahead and do that around all the holes, even the good ones right here. So just pour it around. Let it really absorb it. And we won't have any issues going forward with these holes. All right, well, we are back on the road for some more testing, and I just wanna say, if we get a small numerical value in, in decibel change, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's how it feels to our ears, because the decibel scale is not linear, it's logarithmic, and I'm not gonna be able to explain that very well, but essentially, it's kind of like the Richter scale, where, like with an earthquake, if you have a 2.0, I believe, is 10 times less devastating than a 3.0, and it works in a similar way with decibels, so I picked up this quick definition just to be able to explain it better to you guys. It says, a logarithmic scale is used when there is a large range of quantities. It is based on orders of magnitude rather than a standard linear scale. So each mark on the decibel scale is the previous mark multiplied by a value. So just so, just so we know, if we get like a difference of three, four, five decibels, it's a lot more than what it sounds like. So let's go ahead and uh, see how this does. We switched over to the GoPro for the stabilization, but we're doing the exact same test, going about 35 miles an hour, and we're gonna go ahead and put the phone in the back of the cab where it was last time with the same amount of interior installed that was there last time and see what we get. So I looked back there when it was 65, but I'm slowing down, but I would imagine it was probably lower if it was already at 65. So let's go ahead and speed back up and check it again. Get back up to 35 miles an hour, see where we're at. Maybe this time I can look back at that and see what it actually was. All right, we're going 35. Sixty-eight, sixty-nine. Sixty-seven. Got an average of 65 right there on that little stretch going 35 miles an hour. That's a that's a big difference. That's what, six, seven decibels of difference right there compared to before the sound deadening. That's actually really good and I can definitely tell inside the cab of the truck for sure. Well, as you guys saw, there was about a six decibel, seven decibel reduction right there after installing all the sound deadening mat throughout the truck. Now, also, one of the things we have to consider is there's no interior back there. So if I were to toss in the seats and everything else, we're probably gonna get a little bit more sound reduction. And just from driving this thing around, I can definitely tell that it's quieter than it was, especially a lot of that like metal tingy sound is gone from the doors and the quarter panels that I would hear pretty often when driving this. And uh, 
yeah, for I mean, for the money spent, I think this is totally worth it. It takes a lot of time to install it. Uh, this is probably a solid three, four days of work to get everything clean, everything removed out of the truck, and then, or the, the other way around, everything moved out of the truck and everything cleaned, and then laying down all that sound deadening mat. It takes a lot of time. So definitely put a couple days aside if you're going to do something like this. With that said, that's going to wrap up this video. Let me know what other interior mods you want to see in the Land Cruiser. I have some ideas, but I want to know what you guys want to see done to this as well. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that thumbs up button if you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.